Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Nick Maryhugh. I am a teaching artist with Chicago Arts Partnerships and Education, and this is the next iteration of my uh, Reaper tutorial series. This tutorial series is geared towards um, specifically the Music Club at North Grand High School in Chicago, Illinois, but I hope that it has some information that is uh, useful and interesting to anyone who happens to stumble across this video. So in the last a uh, couple of videos, in the last two videos, we've talked a little bit about how to edit audio samples, um, assuming that you already have a sample. Um, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can, in Reaper, generate some sound without having a pre-recorded sample. Um, and the way we're gonna do this is by using a built-in MIDI keyboard. Um, it's worth noting, that uh, especially for those of you in the North Grand Music Club, you've seen my little white MIDI keyboard. I have an Arturia Mini Lab. Um, you can do this even if you don't have a dedicated MIDI keyboard because if you're using a laptop, <coughs> excuse me, or a desktop computer, you can turn uh, the actual QWERTY keyboard into a functioning MIDI keyboard. So let's talk about how we're gonna do that. This is gonna be a bit of a, a speed run through this video. It's gonna be kind of a quick one today. Um, again, if you have questions, please post them in the comments. Um, or if you are a member of the North Grand Music Club, um, let Miss Levos or Miss Nava know and they can reach out to me. Um, okay, so we've got a new project open. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, go over to the space that our tracks are in. I'm assuming that our preferences are set. So I will, I will go check out our preferences here. Control P, or I guess let's go options down to preferences. I've got the audio coming out of my headphones, which is what I want. I don't need a microphone right now. So we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna right click on this area in here where our tracks go, and you'll see this little window pop up. We can insert new track this way, we can insert multiple tracks this way, um, do a couple things from this menu, but the thing that we want right now is to insert a virtual instrument on new track. So I'm gonna click that, and you'll see this window pop up. This is the effects menu. Um, there's a lot of different effects. You can see delay, dynamics, EQ, gate, MIDI, pitch correction, reverb. There's so much going on <laughs> in this menu. And we're going to get more into this in a future tutorial for sure. Um, but for the moment, you should get at least these top three. It's likely that you won't have Analog Lab 4. That's a separate program that I'm running. But you should have these three, the Resamplematic 5000, Resynth DR, and Resynth. Um, the simplest one, I think, is the Resynth. Uh, so this is what we're going to use today. Um, it's worth noting these are all VSTIs, and you can go online. These are all virtual instruments. You can go online and search, like, free VSTIs or free VSTs, uh, and there are lots of free instruments that you can check out, um, that you can download and kind of insert into Reaper. And maybe we'll do a future tutorial on that if folks are interested um, on how to get kind of external VSTs into your program. But for now, we will use this kind of default re-synth. We're gonna click it, click OK. And you see we've got a new track here. Uh, the effects button is lit up, right? This, this button is lit green. So if I insert another track right here, you see the effects button is not lit up and this red button over here is not lit up. On the track that we just added, that's our virtual instrument, both of those things are, and we're gonna talk a little bit about why that is. Um, so if I X, this window should pop up right here. This is our recent. If you X this out, you can re-access it by clicking FX. Great. Um, we're only gonna worry about this effect today, so we're not gonna go into more detail about the FX channel, but again, we'll go over that uh, in future videos. So the resynth, uh, this is a pretty powerful tool for being as simple as it is. Um, you can control volume, you can control the kind of minute pitch uh, differences that you want, um, attack, decay, sustain, release, all control the kind of shape of the sound, how quickly does it come in, how long does it sustain for, um, uh, what is the kind of dynamic contour of each individual note. And then down here, wave shape. This is this is mostly, I think, what we're going to be focusing on today. Wave shape, um, square mix, and pulse width are kind of a unit. Sawtooth mix, triangle mix, 
extra sign mix, extra sign tune. These two are also a unit. And these are just different kinds of waveforms um, that if, if y'all have taken, you know, trigonometry or something and worked with sine waves before, uh, you may know that, that sine waves are a really commonly explored um, shape in sound making. Um, so uh, square waves, sawtooth waves, and triangle waves are other kinds of waveforms that are kind of derived from sine tones. Um, and these are going to kind of determine the timbre or the quality of sound of our MIDI instrument. So we've got this set up. We're going to put this over here. We'll go back to our main window. And now, uh, oh, I guess one last thing about this track. Uh, this red button, if you, if you kind of hover over it, it says record armed. If I click it off, it says record arm slash disarm. So if it's off right now uh, and I were to click the record button, it will say no tracks are armed for recording. Okay. Oh, didn't mean to record anyway. Uh, but you could see there as it was recording, nothing was happening. But if I click this track, click this red button, now this track, if I were to click record, it would record whatever I do to this track. Um, that'll make a little more sense in the future, but this is an imperative step if you're going to be using a MIDI keyboard. If you don't have recording armed, this track won't be able to hear your inputs and then you won't get any sound. So make sure that this red uh, button is lit up. So how do we get our keyboard? We're gonna go down to view and we're gonna scroll down to virtual MIDI keyboard. Great. Um, and you can see here, uh, this is a keyboard. This is a keyboard. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit janky, and it's a little bit small, maybe on this computer. But you can see Z, X, C, V, B, N, M, etc. Those correspond to the bottom rows row of keys on your QWERTY keyboard, on your computer or laptop, on your desktop or laptop keyboard. Um, there is a uh, a setting that I like to use when I'm using this, where you right click this, this comes up, and you can see it's already clicked for me. Um, it says send all keyboard input to virtual MIDI keyboard, even when other windows active. And what that means is that even if this is operating in the background, anytime I press on my keyboard a key that would trigger a note, it will trigger that note. So if I'm using a keyboard shortcut or something, it's still gonna trigger those notes. Um, it can be a useful tool. You'll find your own style with it. Um, and you can also dock the virtual MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to dock that right now. And you can see that now I've got this nice big display um, of this keyboard. Um, so uh, I have my inputs locked to that. And I have my track like armed for recording. Uh, let's click a couple buttons. Let's, get, uh, let's try with our square mix all the way up to 1.0. And let's try this out. Great. That is, that is definitely um, coming through. You'll notice when I click this, if you look at these bars right here, they're maxing out. They're yellow. That means that the sound is coming through on that track. The track can hear us fine. Um, you should be able to hear these things in whatever your audio output is. So for me right now, I can hear these in my headphones. Um, if you can't hear anything, it means something went wrong in a prior step. Um, you might also want to check, there's a little zone right here if you're not getting sound, it says in. Um, and there's some different settings in here. There may be uh, an option for you that says um, input MIDI all channels. Um, if, if that is a step that pops up for you, it doesn't usually come up for me unless I have an external MIDI keyboard. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But if you do have um, problems getting sound, that's something worth checking. Um, but you should, have, uh, you should have sound coming through at this point. So let's experiment a little bit with this synth. Um, again, let's play what we just played. Great, so this is square mix with pulse width, pulse width all the way up. Uh, if I move the pulse width a little bit, 
the sound changes. If I move it all the way over, here it gets a lot thinner compared to pulse width at 50. Um, we can go into a more detailed uh, exploration of square waves later and how those work and like what pulse width really is. Um, but for the meantime, just know that this is an option that you have in terms of manipulating the timbre or the quality of sound uh, of your synthesizer. I'm gonna turn the square mix all the way down, go to sawtooth mix. You can hear again, the sound is quite different. Triangle mix here, I'm gonna also boost the volume because triangle waves can be a little bit quieter. Great, and then now I'm gonna add this extra sign. This is kind of finicky on my system, but let's give it a shot. Let's make it like 50. You can hear that's just kind of like a little bit rounder sound. It's adding an extra sign to it. If I mess with this extra sign tune, let's turn it up, uh, let's say up 77 cents. And let's actually turn the volume up a little bit more. So you can hear, um, hopefully that's coming through on your system as well. You can hear that uh, the extra sign tune is actually changing the pitch very slightly. So you get this kind of this kind of wavering, uh, beating sound in the in the synth. Um, basically, what you're doing there is you're making it out of tune. Uh, scents are a very small unit of pitch of measuring pitch or frequency. Um, about a hundred cents to each note on the keyboard. So a hundred cents between V and G here, or F and G flat. Um, uh, so that's another option for you. For right now, let's stick with square wave at hundred or at one. Uh, and let me just show you real quick how to record something. Our next tutorial is gonna be on the MIDI editor and how to kind of expand um, what we've recorded. Uh, but for right now, what we're gonna do is just click record here and play what we just played again. And when you stop recording, uh, you'll see this, you can rename the file. I will click that, rename selected, and I will name it uh, Cape MIDI, okay and save all. Now it's important to note, you notice that this looks pretty different than the audio samples that we've worked with before. This is not an audio file, this is a MIDI file. Um, and the important distinction is that this information, um, MIDI is a, is, is a set of numbers from zero to 127 that are programmed to talk to this instrument that we've set up in here, this recent. Um, if you were to open this MIDI file that we just saved, capedmidi.mid, um, and try to play it, it wouldn't make any sound. It has to have this instrument. So if you want to go ahead and uh, have a file that you can listen to, if you wanna if you wanna have like a wave or an MP3 of this, you have to go to File, Render, and go through the export process that we talked about at the end of the first tutorial. So if you if you need um, to check that out, you can look at the other videos on my channel. Um, Reaper Tutorial 1 will have the export tutorial. But just know that MIDI files are not audio files. They're kind of subtly different, and if you try and play a MIDI file, it won't have any sound. Um, you need to export it as a WAV or an MP3. Um, just as a little teaser, if I double click this item, we open up this menu, and this is really the nuts and bolts um, kind of nitty gritty stuff that we're gonna get into next time about how can we kind of start to manipulate um, MIDI sounds. Uh, this is a super powerful menu. I use this all the time in my practice. Um, but that is for next time. So uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, let m if you're in NGHS Music Club, let uh, Miss Nava or Miss Levos know. If you are uh, just poking around on YouTube and you find this, leave some questions in the comments. I'll be checking those comments frequently. Um, thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial.